will derive more trigonometric identities associated with sine and cosine functions. So far, we have extended the definition of sine and cosine from the original one to all real numbers based on the coordinate system. In particular, we have sine and cosine functions. They are two pi periodic, or in degrees, we say 360 uh, periodic. That means f each two pi, the function sine and cosine, both of them, will repeat themselves. OK, so here are two uh, uh, basic trigonometric identities we have already seen from the original definition. Let's see what more we can uh, derive. First, let's look at the relation between uh, sine theta and sine negative theta, cosine theta and cosine negative theta. So I have sine negative theta and sine theta. So what's the relation between these two? Uh, let's recall, as a convention, when we say an uh, angle is positive, we mean we measure it uh, counterclockwise, right? So in this you have theta 0, theta pi over 2, it's a pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, uh, 2 pi plus pi over 2, right? Let's go. Now, if it's negative, we just measure it clockwise. So if this one is theta, negative theta either flip along the x-axis. This is, if this one is theta, let's say pi over 4, this one just negative pi over 4. Go clockwise. Okay, now clear geometrically. We know this is x, this is y, but here's the negative direction of uh, y. Right? I mark this one, this negative one. This is y, this one is negative y. Okay, I can put the, this point of P is x negative y. Right? Alright, so how we calculate sine of theta? Sine theta is just y coordinate. So if I go from theta to negative theta, y changes to negative y. So I change the sign. From here, we just derive sine negative theta equals negative sine theta. The change the sign. Or we can say, in other words, we can say the function of sine, the sine function, is an odd function. So we can say this. Uh, this just means the sine uh, function is an odd function. Odd function. Okay. Then how about cosine theta? Cosine theta. So what's the relation between cosine negative theta and cosine theta? Cosine theta is given by the x coordinate. But for theta negative theta, x coordinate is the same. It does not change. So they are exactly the same. The cosine negative theta equals cosine theta. In other words, we say the cosine function is an even function. So cosine is an even function. All right. Okay. So here we derive the two more uh, trigonometric identities: sine negative theta equals negative sine theta. Sine theta is an odd function. Cosine negative theta equals cosine theta. Does not change sign. So it's an even function. Let's see more. How about the relation between uh, sine uh, pi minus theta and uh, sine theta? Uh, let's see if this is theta, where is the pi minus theta? Uh, pi minus theta, geometrically, because here is theta equals pi of 2, pi minus theta is just a reflection with respect to the y axis. Okay, so if we mark here, If these two angles are the same, this angle is pi minus theta. Uh, it's just a reflection, as mentioned. It's just a reflection with respect to the uh, y-axis. Uh, my graph is not very accurate, but this is a reflection. Okay. Uh, here I have the y-coordinate. Uh, this is the x. Now it becomes negative x. If I mark this point, this will be P, if I put this negative x, y is the same, so the P, negative x, y. 
Therefore, the y coordinate remains the same, but the x coordinate changes sign. If we go back to the definition of sine and cosine, I get sine where sine is y, and y does not change. So they are the same. How about cosine? What is the relation between cosine pi minus theta and cosine theta? Well, cosine is the x coordinate. Now from theta to pi minus theta, the x coordinate changes from x, x to negative x. So the change sign. So this one equals negative cosine x. Alright? We derive two more trigonometric identities. So far we have derived these eight trigonometric identities. Uh, the first two say sine function and cosine functions, they are two pi periodic, or in degrees, we say 360 degree periodic. Number four and number three uh, tell us the relation between sine and cosine. So sine pi over two minus theta is cosine theta. Cosine pi over two minus theta is sine theta. Five and six uh, say sine theta is an order function. So sine negative theta equals negative sine theta. And uh, cosine negative theta equals cosine theta. So this is an odd function. This is an even function. Uh, number seven and number eight uh, say um, sine pi minus theta, or we say 180 minus theta, if you use degrees, equals sine theta. Cosine pi minus theta equals negative cosine theta. All right. Uh, these eight are those uh, basic ones. Uh, I think you should memorize them. The point is, if we use these eight basic trigonometric identities, we are able to derive all trigonometric, trigonometric identities in this category. Uh, let's see two examples. For example, I want to see what happens if I have sine pi over 2 plus theta, or we say sine 90 degree plus theta in degrees. Okay, so we how, how we handle this? Uh, we can first uh, write this as sine pi over 2 minus negative theta, right? And then we say, okay, we can consider negative theta as uh, one angle because it's just theta is just a letter. Uh, now we can use the equality here, so sine pi over 2 minus theta equals cosine theta. So by 3, so I use 3 here, by 3, we get this one equals cosine negative theta, right? All right. Then we use the fact cosine theta, cosine theta is an even function, which is what we have here, so by 6. I get this is cosine theta. So I derive sine pi over 2 plus theta equals cosine theta. Uh, similarly, this I leave as an exercise. Similarly, you can derive the cosine pi over 2 plus theta and this one equals, but not sine theta, it's negative sine theta. This time it's negative sine theta. Right. So this one uh, you can do by yourself. Example 2. Uh, let's say sine pi plus theta. What happens if sine pi plus theta? Right? I apply the same trick. This one equals sine pi minus negative theta. Alright? Uh, okay. Now we Again, we consider this as a whole angle. Uh, we apply sine pi minus an angle to negative sine theta. So by 7, I get this one is sine negative theta, right? And then we know sine function is um, our function. Uh, it's given by number 5. So sine negative theta is negative sine theta. All right, so I get this one equals by five. This equals negative sine theta. Okay, so we derive sine pi plus theta 
equals negative sine theta. Similarly, we can get a co cosine pi plus theta is also negative cosine theta. So for pi, if you tell pi, you see here the pattern is the same. Sine pi plus theta is negative sine theta. Cosine pi plus theta is negative cosine theta. But for pi plus 2, it's different. The sine is different. You change from sine to cosine to cosine to sine, but for sine, it's plus. For cosine, it's minus. Now, let me summarize some general rules. So in general, if I have, say, sine k pi, over 2. So here k is odd number. If k, this is odd. k pi plus 2, I have either I could have plus theta or I have minus theta. If we have a situation like this, that will change from sine to cosine. We have either is cosine theta or is negative cosine theta. Of course, this is when we fix the k. This is, we fix k, right? For a fixed k, if k is odd, now it depends on what k is, right? And for theta plus or minus theta, we can have either it's uh, cosine theta or negative cosine theta. Now, cosine is similar. If we have a cosine k pi over 2, k is odd, uh, plus or minus theta, we'll get for fixed k, we'll get this either sine theta or negative sine theta. So you change the point, change from cosine to sine. If here we have an odd multiple of pi over 2. Now if we have multiple pi, if I have sine uh, k pi plus or minus theta, then it still you get a sine which is either you have sine theta or negative sine theta. So the function itself does not change. The thing that's going to, we need to determine is negative or positive. Our cosine is similar. If I have cosine k pi plus or minus theta, then you get either it's cosine theta or negative cosine theta. All right. Uh, that, of course, uh, the issue is you need to determine, right, if I give you a k in these uh, four scenarios, you need to determine whether it's positive or negative. There is a um, formula, right, so there are formulas which uh, give precise calculation when you get minus, when you get uh, part, uh, uh, plus, but I don't think those formulas are very easy to uh, memorize. So, what you need to uh, memorize uh, for the general duration is just keep in mind if you have um, odd, odd, odd multiple of pi 2 you should change from sine to cosine or cosine to sine but if you, if you have a multiple pi then the function is the same it's still sine to sine cosine to cosine but you need to uh, determine it's positive or uh, negative to determine positive or negative either you just go have, you just uh, go back to those basic formula. So as we did for the previous two examples, use those basic formula to find the ex ex uh, uh, exact uh, representation, either plus or minus. Or so that's one way. Or you can just use a special uh, theta to test. It, right? You can say for here I can use I can plug theta equals zero to test whether you get the plus or minus. For sine, you can say put the theta equals pi over 2 to, uh, to test, to determine whether it's plus or minus, right? We can, the one way, so use, can use special values of theta, like theta equals 0 or theta equals pi over 2 to determine plus or minus. Plus or minus. Okay, or as I said, just go back to those basic uh, identities and then uh, do directly find what is 
the uh, crack the site. Let's look at uh, some simple trigonometric equations. For the graph of sine and cosine, at the periodic, a sine is a shift, right? You can see the sine is a shift of cosine x to the right hand side by pi over 2. Uh, all right, so from the two graphs, we, we can quickly derive if sine x equals 0, uh, if and only if x is integer multiple of pi, right? 0 pi, uh, 2 pi, or negative pi, negative 2 pi. So this is if and only if the x is k pi and k is um, an integer. So this one means the, uh, the set of integers. Uh, similarly, if I look at, say, sine x is 1, okay, that means x is pi over 2 or pi over 2 plus 2 pi plus 4 pi and plus any integer multiples of 2 pi. Of course, that includes the negative, right? Pi over 2, uh, then minus 2 pi, minus 4 pi, right? Okay, so this means if and only if x is pi over 2 plus 2 k pi, again, k is any integer, especially it includes negative ones. Uh, similarly, if I have sine x is negative 1, then if and only if the x equals, you can put negative pi over 2, then negative pi over 2 plus 2k pi, uh, k is uh, an integer. Or you can replace negative pi over 2 by uh, 3 pi over 2. It's the same because it, it's uh, just adjusted by, uh, by 2 pi. Okay. Uh, then we can also say for cosine, so cosine x equals 0. When cosine x is 0, so it's pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Well, it just uh, uh, odd, power, odd multiples of uh, pi over 2. So this implies if and only if x equals pi over 2, but this odd multiple is 2k plus 1. Uh, k is, again, is uh, any integer. Uh, then we have cosine x is 1. When cosine x is 1, it's 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, negative 2 pi. Well, just any multiple of 2 pi. So it implies uh, x equals 2k pi. Then how about cosine x is negative 1, right? Cosine x is negative 1. Yes, uh, negative 1. Yes, negative 1. Okay, negative 1 means it's pi. Right, negative pi, 3 pi, and 5 pi. Okay, implies x is any odd multiple of pi. So x is 2k plus 1 times pi. Next, let's use uh, trigonometric identities and two pi periodicity of sine and cosine to solve other simple trigonometric equations. For example, if I have sine x equals sine y, what can you say about the relation between x and y? Uh, clearly, if x and y are the same, or the difference is uh, any um, integer multiples of 2 pi, they are the same. That's because of the periodicity of sine function. But meanwhile, we know sine x equals, right, sine x equals sine pi minus x. Therefore, combine those things together. If sine x equals sine y, we have two situations. Either we get is one is x equals y plus two k pi, and that's one case. Or this is just uh, uh, one of these two situations. That's another one. Or that's two. This x equals pi minus y plus two k pi. Now either case will give us sine x equals sine y. Here again. Uh, for our k, our k is uh, an integer. All right. So this is if and uh, only if. Now how, how about uh, cosine x equals cosine y? Well, it's similar. Uh, one obvious case is if x equals y plus any multiple of two pi, they're the same. It's a two pi periodicity. Uh, meanwhile, we know cosine function even, so cosine x e equals negative, uh, equals cosine negative x, right? So y could be negative x plus, 
and the uh, integer multiple 2 pi. So from here we derive, we can have uh, 1 that is x equals y plus 2k pi, or we have x equals negative y plus 2k pi. Right? This is due to the evenness of the function cosine x. Now, of course, we can also deal with uh, sine x equals cosine y. So how about sine x equals uh, cosine y? Uh, for this situation, we can switch this to either to that or that, right? Because I can switch cosine y, uh, I can get this is just equals uh, sine uh, pi over 2 minus y. Then I can apply this scenario, 1 or 2, right? So from here, I, okay, I get two scenarios. I get one that's x equals pi over 2 minus y plus 2k pi. That's uh, division 1. And what I mean is we can go from just use here, apply to this. And then we can, uh, the second one uh, will be just x equals uh, pi minus the whole thing, right? So pi minus that. Uh, that's uh, pi over 2 plus y and then plus 2k pi, right? Okay, uh, here demonstrates uh, how we use the periodicity and uh, those uh, trigonometric identities we have uh, talked before to solve those uh, simple trigonometric equations. Let's look at uh, several problems. Problem number one. This is a question from a past AMC 12 test. The problem asks, what is the least period of the function that is a composition of sine and cosine function? We know for both sine and cosine functions, uh, they are 2 pi periodic. 2 pi is their least period. So obviously, 2 pi is uh, one period, right? Sine x plus 2 pi equals sine x which does not change the function. The question is, is 2 pi the least period? Here, when we say period, we stay to uh, positive numbers. Alright, let's assume theta is the least period. And we must have the theta that is bigger than zero and less or equivalent to 2 pi, because 2 pi is obviously a period, okay? Well, by the definition of the leap period, we have this function cosine uh, sine x plus theta. Here, we stick to the unit of radian. This one shall be the same as cosine uh, sine x. This, this will be true for every x. So for every x real numbers. This just means the collection of all real numbers. For every. Now, theta is fixed. What are we going to do for such a situation? What are we going to do, it's, which is quite a uh, typical strategy, we just use uh, special values of x to uh, dig out more information. For example, the most convenient choice for x is I said, okay, let's x equals 0. So what do we get? If x equals 0, I should put it here, I get cosine. Here is uh, sine theta uh, equals cosine. Sine 0, we know 0, and co this cosine 0. And what's cosine 0? Cosine 0 is 1. All right. Then we have cosine evaluated on sine theta is 1. While sine theta, regardless what is uh, the concrete value of theta, this one is always between negative 1 and 1, right? Uh, if we recall the graph of a co of cosine function, let's recall the graph of cosine function. Here is uh, this x, we have the cosine x. Uh, when 0 is 1, when is power 2 is 0. When is pi is negative 1. Okay, negative pi of 2 is still 0, and negative pi is also negative 1. This is the graph of 
cosine function. Here is 2 pi. This part is similar to 2 pi. Negative, well, this is negative 2 pi. Here's negative 1. All right. So in order, and sine theta between negative 1 and 1, that's right here, 1 and negative 1. Now, in order for the value to be 1, which is right here, there's only one choice. The theta has, the uh, sine theta has to be 0. So from here, we derive sine theta has to be 0. Okay? If sine theta is 0, if theta is between 0 and 2 pi, well, we have only two choices of theta. And this implies, because we exclude 0, we require the pure to be positive. From here, we get either theta equals 2 pi or theta equals pi. Right? Only two possibles. Now, theta 2 pi, we know it's obviously a period. So let's check whether theta equals pi is a period. If theta e equals pi is a period, by this computation, it must be the least period. Because here, we basically uh, demonstrate if theta is a period between 0 and 2 pi, it has to be either 2 pi or pi, right? So we just need to check whether theta is equals pi is a period. As we said, the next step is to check whether pi is a period. If it's a period, then it is the least period. Okay? What we need to verify is, question mark, cosine sine x plus pi, whether this one equals, so this is what we need to verify, equals cosine sine x. Now, let's check. Sine x plus pi, if we recall uh, those trigonometric identities, this one equals negative sine x. And this is also true for cosine. So cosine x plus pi is also negative cosine x. It's, it keeps the same function, but with a different sign. All right, uh, so this one equals cosine negative sine x. Here we have negative in front of sine x. Now, let's recall. Cosine x is an even function. This is an even function. That says what do we have equals cosine sine x. That's exactly what we want. Therefore, we have verified pi is indeed period. Accordingly, it is the least period. It is pi, the least period. Let's look at uh, the next problem. The question asks, for how many x between 0 and 3 pi, this trigonometric equation holds. Uh, sine for x equals sine x. For this type of problems, there are in general two methods. Method 1, I call algebraic method. Uh, the typical approach is to solve the equation directly by using uh, those uh, trigonometric identities. The second method, I call geometric method. For that method, uh, the usual approach is to draw the graphs of uh, those functions that are involved. Like here, we have sine for x and sine x. So we draw the graph of the two functions on the coordinate plane, and then we just draw a metric count the number of intersections, because each solution is corresponding to one intersection of uh, graphs. All right, now let's apply uh, both the methods to solve this problem. Let's start from the algebraic method, method one. Algebraic. Method. All right. First, let's recall the basic fact when the sine of two angles are the same. As we said before, if I have sine alpha equals sine beta, then there are two situations. Case one, alpha and beta, the difference is 2k pi because it's pure oblique. Number one, 
alpha equals beta plus a multiple of uh, 2 pi. Uh, k is uh, any integer. Okay, this one means the set of integers. Or we could have it's alpha equals pi minus beta. And then we plus a multiple of uh, 2 pi, 2k pi. Again, for here pi could be any integer. That's because we have the trigonometric identity sine uh, alpha equals sine pi minus alpha, right? All right, now let's apply uh, both of them. For one, we get uh, it's uh, 4x equals x plus 2k pi. And then we solve x, right? we get a general representation of the solution for this equation. We get x equals 2k pi divided by 3. Uh, but here we have a constraint on x, x is between 0 and 3 pi. All right, so I want this one belongs to the interval from 0 to 3 pi. And this tells me my k is an integer from 0 uh, to 4. Right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here we have 5. Have 5 uh, solutions in this case. And we can check. We can, uh, we can uh, plug k into this expression and we can write out all solutions. Now let's look at uh, case 2. From case 2, we have is 4x, I put 2, 4x equals pi minus x and plus 2k pi. Then we, we obtain another representation of, uh, of solution, that's x equals uh, 2k plus 1 times pi and divided by 5. Now again, we want x between 0 and 3 pi. From here, it's easy to determine all those valid integers of k. We have k start from 0 and can go all the way to 7. Uh, so 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 7. If you plug those numbers into the expression, we get a solutions, we get a bunch of solutions uh, in this uh, case. If I count, we have 8. We have 8. In total, we have 8 in this case. Therefore, if we combine, we get 5 in this case, we get 8 in this case. Therefore, if we combine them together, we get a total number is 13. So there are 13 solutions uh, for this trigonometric equation if we just consider x between 0 and 3 pi. This is the algebraic method. Let's look at uh, the geometric method. As I said before, this approach, what do we, for this approach, what do we do is we draw graphs of sine x and cosine x uh, within the given range, so from 0 to pi. Here, the blue one represents the graph of sine x, which is uh, 2 pi periodic all the way from 0 to 3 pi. And the red one uh, represents the graph for sine 4x. Now, by a simple calculation, it's easy to see the period of uh, sine 4x is pi over 2, because if we do x pi over 2 and we do the plot here, we get 4x by 2 pi, then it's periodic. Sine function is 2 pi periodic, so we get a sine 4x. Now, equivalently, we say how you go from the graph of sine x to sine 4x, we just compress it, right? Just compress it uh, to uh, one force. That's uh, what we have. Okay. So, my point is sine 4x within each range from 0 to pi over 2, within each 0 pi over 2, 0 pi over 2, 0 pi over 2, it just repeat it itself. Okay. It's a rescaled version of sine x. Now, when we put these uh, two graphs together on the uh, coordinate plane, um, those intersections are the uh, equi uh, solutions to the equation sine 4x equals 4x. Since we only need to find how many solutions this one has, let's just count manually. This is the first solution, so this is number one, 
And this is the second sushi in the section. So here we have two more, two. And then uh, this is the number five. Right, so here we have number six, number seven. Uh, this is number eight, uh, number nine, number 10, uh, number 11, number 12, and number 13. Right, in total we have twice 13 intersections. So again, we derive the answer 13. Uh, one advantage of the uh, geometric method is we can use this approach to handle uh, situations where algebraic methods are not uh, applicable. For example, if I can replace this one, say this one equals x over 100. For this kind of equation, like sine for x equals x over 100, we cannot really solve this algebraic, which means we cannot really find what the solution are. But if we can apply, but we still apply the geometric method, like draw the graph, and then we draw the line, y equals x over 100, and then just count manually how many uh, intersections we have. So that's the uh, advantage of um, the uh, geometric method. Now, what is the disadvantage? The disadvantage is, we cannot really say what the solutions are, right? We, we cannot derive this precise information what the solutions are based on the uh, geometric method. All we can get is some very rough uh, idea. Uh, they are approximately a location and in particular how many uh, we have.